couple of housekeeping things. One, I'm shooting in natural light, so if the light slightly changes, you know why. I haven't done this in about three years, and I just felt like doing it. Second, I want to thank Damien Wilde for lending me this laptop to review today. Again, he's kind of sent me a lot of stuff, so that's why it's all kind of being bundled up into one. And thirdly, this comment was put on, I believe, the community tab of my YouTube page. So I'm going to kind of adhere to that. I think I'm going to stick to one upload a week again. I'm going to go back to a Wednesday one upload a week. And hear me out here, MWC is coming up. And as you'd imagine, work gets pretty busy around then. So I'm not going to have lots of time to create two videos a week. When work gets a bit less busy again, I'll revert back to two a week, but I think it's best that I keep to an upload schedule and do one a week. So Wednesday will be the upload day of choice at six o'clock the standard time. Thanks. Without further ado, let's get into my review of the Huawei MateBook X Pro. We first got to talk about the display on this laptop because I think it is one of, if not the best, display that I've ever seen on a laptop, let down by just one thing. The resolution is 3000 by 2000 it's an IPS display meaning it's got spectacularly good viewing angles, it gets really really bright, in fact one of the brightest displays I've ever seen in anything, it's superb, really good for outdoor viewing, however the fact that it's a glossy screen as opposed to a matte one is a bit of a shame, but you do get touchscreen because of that and the touchscreen is really good, in fact it's one of the things I now require in a laptop. The display is very sharp. The fact that it's taller means you get more viewing real estate, especially when it comes to lists and things you have to scroll through like websites. However, the one drawback to this display is it's gray to gray response times. And you'll notice that by dragging things around, by moving the cursor quite quickly, it's not necessarily the trails that it leaves behind on the screen. That's more due to the refresh rate, which is 60 Hertz. However, you'll notice that it takes a while for those pixels to switch from one image to the next. Moving on, the speakers are pretty good. They're nowhere near as good as the MacBook speakers because they lack any kind of bass and depth. They're quite tinny, but they do get quite loud. One of the loudest set of laptop speakers I've ever seen, or heard even. And the fact that they're on the front next to the keyboard means they're not pointing downwards towards the tabletop that a lot of laptops have. So I suppose that's a one up on this one. I think it, if I had to give it a grade, it would be kind of like a seven out of 10. Good just not the best. Moving on to the keyboard, which is very make or break for me in laptops. Now this keyboard is, as I say with pretty much everything, very nice. It lacks the numpad, which I like, and in a 13 inch laptop, it was always going to lack that kind of numpad. However, I feel the one problem I have with it is that it's a US layout. Uh, so I find it really tricky to get on with. When I hit the enter key, I tend to hit the middle of the UK enter key, which is above the US enter key and I'll put those on the screen for you to see what the, the difference is there. It's a bit odd so it's hard for me to get used to however a couple of keyboards in the past on laptops that I've used have been UK layout or US layout rather so I've been able to kind of get used to it but it's just something to keep in mind. Also if my lens fogs up uh, yeah just deal with it and I'll have to put more b-roll in. The backlight on the keys is strong and it looks good it doesn't last as long as I'd like and you kind of have to press the function key for it to come back up. I do like the way the control and function keys are placed. I prefer it that way than the other way around, which is what I had on my ThinkPad. The key feel is nice and deep, much deeper than the, uh, the MacBook scissor switch. However, it's still not as nice as ThinkPad keyboard in my opinion. I just think those are the best keyboards in the business. So keyboard's pretty good, but moving on to the trackpad, it was a bit hit and miss for me. The hit was that it's nice and big and Huawei's used the whole of the real estate below the keyboard. There's just millimeters in between the top and the bottom and the edge of the laptop and the keyboard. It sits really well, has the best palm rejection I've ever seen in any kind of trackpad at all. It's fairly accurate too, but the clicks are just horrific. They are hardware clicks, they're not kind of the force clicks that you see in MacBooks or anything like that. And they're very hard to tell the difference. Like, they're very hard to tell the difference. It's very hard to tell the difference between left and right click. So you kind of have to guess, unless you press right in the corners of the trackpad, which feels a little bit odd. I personally prefer hardware, like separate left and right clicks. However, most modern laptops don't have that. So that kind of sucks. But yeah, trackpad is good. The clicks, not so much. I'm going to have to sort this bloody lens out. Hoping that the focus and everything is right for this now. I've had to change it out. 
absolutely sucks. The webcam's pretty shocking, however, I really like the mechanism. The fact that it sits in between the function keys is really cool. I, d I don't know why, I just think it's awesome. However, the placement is awful, so I suppose in some respect, it's only the fact that I like the mechanism, not necessarily the webcam or the way it's placed. There's plenty of room in the top bezel to put a webcam there, and if you look at smartphones, their bezels are about that thick anyway for some pretty good cameras. So not having a, a decent placement for the webcam is one thing. However, the next thing is the fact that this is a sub one megapixel webcam. So the quality is just awful. And I said I don't like the placement of it. It looks up your nose, but the main thing is that it just, your key, your hands typing covers like 30% of the image when you're looking at the, the webcam image on this thing. I don't know why they put it there. I, it's a really cool mechanism as I keep saying, but I just, the webcam is probably, you, you're gonna wanna go with an external one if you're using the webcam regularly enough that you're going to gonna need it. I don't know why it took me so long to get onto this, but the build and the design of this laptop is phenomenal. I never thought you could get a more premium laptop than a new MacBook Pro, but this thing just exceeds all expectations. This is the nicest laptop I've ever used by a country mile. It's better than the MacBook I used. It's better than my previous MacBooks, better than my Dell XPS 12. Uh, even better than the Dell XPS 13 that I borrowed for a little bit. This thing is, it's just magnificent. It's really sleek and executive. There's the Huawei logo on the back, but it's more text instead of an actual logo. The gunmetal gray just looks so, so clean. It looks like a proper executive's laptop, which is what I'd expect from a laptop that's this expensive that doesn't necessarily pack that much performance. But yeah, I mean, everywhere you look, the angles, this thing is just it's gorgeous is what it is. From the fingerprint scanner slash home button to the display and its minimal bezels to the angles on the side to the profiles to the port placements and everything like that, everything just seems calculated and precise. And I think there's, there's just no getting away from that. This is a beautiful piece of kit, much like Huawei's high-end smartphones actually. At 1.33 kilos, this thing isn't the lightest laptop in the world. It's not like an LG Gram, but it is still very light and I carried it around in my backpack. It was easy because it's just so small and so thin. You know, even if you've got a full backpack, it's easy to get a laptop in the back. Or if you've got a camera bag with a, a laptop sleeve, it'll fit in there as well. I like the fact that the charger is small and it's all integrated. It's USB-C to C, which I love. I can't get over, you know, if I see a USB, micro USB product, I just instantly hate it. It's gonna have USB-C for me. Continuing with the ports, you get one of them is a Thunderbolt 3 port, which is 40 gigabit per second. You get a full size USB A, which is a very nice touch. You get a headphone port on the left hand side with those two USB C's. I would say that it's missing an SD card reader, but I don't think this is for creatives. Hey, look, my lights fell behind the thing. That sucks. As I said, I don't think this is missing an SD card reader. What I think it's missing is an HDMI port. A lot of executives and people are gonna buy this laptop, probably gonna plug it into TVs, projectors, stuff like that. And I think an HDMI would have been a good port there. Even if you had to omit the USB, one of the USB-Cs, I think it would have been just fine. Now, on the flip side of that, there are gonna be a lot of people who aren't going to be using an HDMI and they're just gonna use a dongle anyway. And to be honest, that's what I used. I used a Rhino Shield dongle. I recommend it, I'll put a link in the video description. I've had it for a, a year or so now. It's been really good for me. Even though it's not a dongle book and even though it's got that USB-A, more times than not, I think you're gonna need the dongle. So even though it's a nice thin light laptop and the, the charger's nice and thin and light too, you need to remember to bring the dongle with you. Performance on this laptop, I'm gonna get it straight out of the way. It is not fantastic. It's not 800 pounds good. It's got an MX250 graphics chip, which is two gigabytes, ran fairly well. CPU is an i7 quad core, or rather an i5 quad core with another four threads, so eight threads total. And that was better than expected. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. And this model has 16 gigabytes of RAM and an NVMe one terabyte SSD. And those specs are okay. I think I would have expected a 1050 or a 1050 Ti in this model. However, I think that may have put it in a slightly different market. And the fact that this thing's so thin and light, it probably would have thermal throttled anyway. In day-to-day -day tasks, 
performance has been phenomenal and I've been kind of using it like I would consider someone who's going to buy it to use it there's there's some sense in there somewhere I was running slack discord brave Google Chrome and doing pretty much all of my work on this thing I was reading emails writing scripts writing articles editing articles doing pretty much all the stuff I do for Android Authority minus the videoing and editing on this laptop and it ran like an absolute charm. I'm used to having between 15 and 20 tabs open at a time across multiple windows and it just took it. It was really good and it basically never spun up its fan when doing those day-to-day -day tasks. Battery life was phenomenal. It would last me a full day, absolutely no problem. In fact, sometimes it would do me two days. Now, do remember that I do have a PC, but to be honest, I hardly ever use the desktop PC when using this laptop because I just wanted to use this laptop so much. And we'll get into that into the conclusion. But if you want to see some decent performance benchmarks, like some proper real world gaming benchmarks, I made a video on flat 4K that I'll leave a link to in the video description and probably t uh, pin it in the link in the comments. And it will take you to the, w the video where I kind of got to test it out on a racing simulator and used the laptop purely to run the games. And I think you'll be surprised uh, with the results because I certainly was. And I say battery life is good. It's only got a 57 watt hour battery, which is really, really small, but it still managed to get me through a full day. And that's not something my MacBook Pro was ever able to do. And we move on to accessibility and pricing, which is very difficult to talk about as it was with the Note 10 Plus, but even more so here because this is not readily available in the UK or the US. You'll have to get it imported from somewhere. And that is a real shame. And I'll tell you why. I think I've kind of found the laptop that I want, like the laptop that would suit me the most. I've had laptops on and off for, you know, the past 10 years now. I've never had a laptop that I've wanted to use and that has gotten me so much work done as much as this one. This laptop, the Huawei MateBook X Pro, may be possibly the perfect laptop for me. If there was a 1050 Ti in it, I think I would have to just go out and buy one, but since there's not, I'm kind of just holding off. I, I really do have to give this laptop back, and I can't stress enough how annoying that is because it is by far the nicest laptop, the best laptop I've ever used. My MacBook Pro, which by the way, if you don't know, I sold um, about a, a month ago, was a good laptop, and it's it was certainly for someone out there. Someone had a, a place for it that was going to use it for everything it was capable of doing. But I just don't think I get on well with Mac OS anymore. You know, I've had Macs and PCs my entire life, but these days, if it's not running Windows or Linux, it's just not going to work for me. So, which is ironic because I actually hate Windows, you know, it's stupid. In fact, one little tidbit, when I changed the resolution on this to run it on the TV, it told me I didn't have a Windows license key anymore. Absolutely stunning work, Microsoft. We just had the spiciest coffee in the world. And with that, I think I've got to stop there. Uh, it's just such a phenomenal laptop. And if you have the opportunity to buy one, I absolutely recommend you go and buy one. Yeah, maybe it's just my thing with Huawei products or something, but they just fit me down to the ground. I want to thank Damien Wild for sending me this machine to allow me to do this review. It's been absolutely great. And I really do appreciate him sending out all this stuff because it makes obviously more content for you guys it makes my life easier as well because i haven't got to find the money to go and buy something to review i want to give a massive shout out to my patrons you guys have been absolutely great thank you so much for supporting me if you like this video please do like it if you disliked it you can hit that button as well let me know in the comments what you thought about this video and please do subscribe if you're new around here to never miss a video like this one i've been ryan thomas this has been my matebook x pro review and i'll see you later peace